Hello, happy, happy Monday. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. It is Monday, and I hope that Mondays is starting to become a day that you are looking forward to meeting great people in our community here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, last week, we were talking to Miss Precious Pauling, who is an amazing woman who was very inspirational to me. Um, and I had the chance to go onto her website to check out her books and also to learn more about her. So I hope that you were able to connect with Miss Precious Pauling last week and I hope that you will continue to watch the Speak Up and Inspire series every Monday at 8 o'clock as we talk to inspirational people in the community. I am currently looking for some men to interview and feature. So if you know an outstanding inspirational man that is doing big things in your community, please ask him to reach out to the Speak Up and Inspire series on Facebook or on Instagram, or they can kind of connect with me directly by messaging me on my Facebook as well. You can also reach me or have a inspirational young man in your community. Reach out to me via email at S-U-I-S, which stands up for Speak Up and Inspire Series. Again, S-U-I-S podcast at gmail.com. So tonight we are going to be talking to the beautiful Miss Sonja. She is the founder of Gracious Hands Transitional Housing. If you want to go to her website right now at gracioushandshousing.org, I would suggest that you check it out while we are talking to her live here on Facebook because I learned a lot just by going to her website about who Miss Sonia is and about what her organization does but also how you can help her organization help women and their children get themselves together. It's transitional housing so it's not meant for it to be permanent but it's a very good service for the community. So, GraciousHandsHousing.org, tune in with us with Miss Sonia. I am going to invite her right now. So, hello, Miss Sonia. I see that you're watching. I am going to send you an invitation right now to join us. Okay, so while we are waiting for Ms. Sonia to um, join us, please go to her website, which is GraciousHandsHousing.org. And on there, I would say first start at the About section so that you can learn about her organization in a nutshell and ask any questions that you might have. I really encourage that if you are an advocate in the community working with domestic violence victims, homeless women and children, or sexual assault victims, um, or just women who are going through a tra transitional moment or time in their life, please, please, please Connect with us tonight here on the Speak Up and Inspire podcast right here live with Miss Sonia so that you can learn more about transitional housing, um, what the benefits are for transitional housing, but also to have a resource in your uh, repertoire for, sorry, excuse me, to, excuse me, I have a cold and my throat is hurting. So please excuse me if I have to keep clearing my, my throat. But again, Go to GraciousHandsHousing.org to learn about the services, but also to ask any questions. Um, this is an amazing organization. She just um, opened a new home. So Miss Sonia is not playing around. She's doing what she can to help the community, but it comes from deep within. So we are going to learn more about Miss Sonia tonight, and hopefully we'll be able to get her connected here very soon. I am... Inviting some people to join us. And let me see. Now, Miss Sonia, I see that you are watching, but for some reason, I am not able to 
add you. Oh, yes, I did. I did add you. So if you look in your notifications, Miss Sonia, you should be able to see where I invited you. If you click on that, then you should be able to join the podcast or you should be able to join me live so that we can chat with you one on one. Meanwhile, while she is connecting with us, I want to read not too much from her website. Again, graciousshandshousing.org. She just opened a center about a month ago that my husband um, had the pleasure of going to, to represent me and my organization, and also to support her as well. And so I am on Gracious Hands Housing right now. And on here... It tells us that Gracious Hands is a transitional program. It is not intended for per permanent housing, like I said earlier. The program will cap assistance at 12 months. Within the 12 months, the families will receive help with job training, job readiness, assistance with seeking and maintaining employment, child care assistance, permanent housing assistance, and financial counseling. Applicants are screened to assess current needs, future needs, and for prior displacement history. So this Gracious Hands provides a lot of services, a lot of help and support for women and their children. And it is a service that is definitely needed. Um, if you have worked with um, women in domestic violence, which is what I do mostly with my organization, Butterfly Visions Projects, there is a deep shortage of housing and emergency housing for women that are going through crisis. There are also women and that maybe are not victims of domestic violence, but are just falling in hard times, have lost their jobs, um, have relocated and unable to get themselves back on their feet. And so transitional housing um, is a safe place for families, women, men, their children, families, to be able to have a place where they can go. Hello, Miss Sonia, how are you? I'm great, how are you? For some reason or another, I couldn't connect through the computer, so I had to go to the phone, and I pray it doesn't okay. ring. Okay. <laughs> well, if it rings, then we know you are a busy woman, and you have people that are depending on you. So we we will definitely understand. So yes. we're gonna try to get, we're gonna get this started. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Have a little sinus a sinus um headache, but otherwise I'm blessed. Hope you are. Yes, I am. I think I'm catching a cold from the twins, but I'm 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 holding in there. I'm holding in there pretty good. Thank yes, you for asking. Yes. So, Miss Sonia, I was on your um your website, and please tell me, is it Sonia or Sonja? Because there's a J in there. Okay, it's Sanja. Sanja. Yes. Sanja. Okay. Yes. All right. Because I'm like, I know I'm saying this wrong. So good, Sanja. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. All Thank right. You. Um. So I am on your website, Gracious Hands Housing, and I just read some of the services, but we do have people that are watching. Um, so tell us what, tell us about Gracious Hands, how it got started, and then your services. Okay, Gracious Hands got started um, because um, it's always been something that I wanted to do. I too was a mother of three, mm -hmm. and I was a single mom, and I, you know, I know the struggle. And the struggle is real. And I've always said that, you know, one day when I'm financially stable, I wanted to open up a shelter. So I'm thinking in my mind that, you know, when I hit the lottery, this is something that I'm going to do. Um, right. However, that's not the way that it worked. God said when I gave you, the, gave you the vision, that was the lottery. Now I just need for you to move. So initially okay. when Gracious Hands started, um, I started out with a partner. And my mm -hmm. partner had to leave for financial reasons. And I was like, okay, God, now, now what? <laughs> what, what is right. it that you want me to do now? Um, you know, because she and I were splitting everything. He said, mm -hmm. it was never contingent upon you having a partner. You just continued <laughs> to move. So four years later, Gracious Hands is still standing. In four years, we've served 150 women and their children, transitioned out 70 into their very own, saving $5,000. We offer mm -hmm. life coaching, counseling, budget and finance, credit repair we have a program called pushing through the pain and i just totally believe in loving them back to life 
because once you can get the women into a great place where it's that they don't they don't have to worry about all of the chaos around them, now they can focus mm -hmm. and really gravitate to the the wholesomeness of gracious hands and get their selves together. Right. So what kind of services can um, a woman in your program receive? Besides the budget and finance, credit repair, life coaching for themselves and the children, um, and just loving them back to life. And we also that's offer awesome. Bible study. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes. We, we it's good to have that foundation, the spiritual foundation. Uh, we all we all have to believe in that and the higher power and that there's someone that there's protecting us and looking over us. So I love yes. that you added that piece. That that's yes. very, very important. Yes. Besides the mental health, having that spiritual awareness and having that spiritual connection is very important. Yeah. Very, very yes. important. And yes. they also once if they're not working when they come in. Um, mm -hmm. I usually give them two weeks to try to find employment on their own. If not, okay. I am partners with a staffing agency and we get them to work in. Um, once they okay. start working, they save 50% of their income. And that's how the women save at least $5,000 before transitioning in. Once we, we're, when they get to a point where it's that their credit is repaired, we start mm -hmm. helping them to look for housing. I don't believe in, um, they'll I have a lot of women come in and say, well, Miss Sandra, I want to try to get on, um, Section eight, no ma'am. We are we are moving yeah. above those type of things. Yeah. The purpose of you getting your credit repaired is so that you can buy a house. So we teach right. them to you know get careers. Um, mm -hmm. We have had women to get their CNA certificate, dental hygienist, phlebotomy, mm -hmm. whatever that it is that they want to do. I ask them to take this time where while they are at Gracious Hands and utilize it. Get a career. Get your budget. Get your credit repaired. So that now right. you can start thinking about the larger things in life. Because I tell them all the time, you can't leave your child of Section 8 apartment. So yeah. we, need to, mm -hmm. we need to buy houses. And, and right. we can once we get our credit repaired. Right. So I wish I would have known about your program when I was, um, before I got married um, and you've met my husband. It was, it's really hard to be a mom and I was going to school for it's full time, trying to work part time, you know, because of some health issues. You know, I, I found myself at a point where I lost my job and I didn't have any savings and I was homeless for a couple of months mm -hmm. and I had to ask for a friend to basically keep my children because I didn't want them going from house to house and sleeping in cars with me. Um, and that was one of the hardest things I think I've ever done when it came to my children is giving them to someone else because I felt that it was more stable for them to be with someone who had a home instead of moving around with me until I got myself together. So how does someone find out about your, your program? Because your program would have been outstanding for me um, and probably would have saved, saved some grief and counseling for me and my kids when we take it back together. So how does someone find out about your program? They can go to gracioushandshousing.org. However, mm -hmm. Department of Social Services, Salvation Army, mm -hmm. United Way, mm -hmm. Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, Police, okay. um, um, CMPD, um, and various churches um, is how mm -hmm. people are referred to me. Okay. So and that was going to be my next question. Who, who yeah. refers them to you? Okay. Yeah. And I don't really have, you know, like a lot of people say, well, um, you have to go through this agency to be referred. If you call me mm -hmm. and I have room, <laughs> you are your referral service. Um, right. I'll bring you in for an assessment and make mm -hmm. sure that you are fit for the program because everyone that says they want help don't want to do what it takes to get the help. Because I tell them it's 90% about what you are willing to do for yourself because gracious hands can't do it for you. You have to be willing to do it for you. That is so true. That is so true. So what are the qualifications for a woman that is needing your assistance? What are the qualifications or what do, what do you require of them to, before coming into your service? The qualification is this, that they be single with children. Um, what okay. I require of them is to be willing to complete all classes. That means your budget and finance, your credit repair, your life coaching, your counseling. It's a must. Because a lot of people, and especially us, we want to stray away from counseling, but 
as a single mom and you're going through a whole lot, you need someone to talk to. And it really you helps you tear down the barriers that you are dealing with while you're going through this transit. Because mm -hmm. everybody, you're transitioning, the children are transitioning, and you need that. So they, they have to be willing to do those things. They have to be willing to work. And they have to be willing to save their money. Because if they don't, mm -hmm. how else will they be able to transition? That's true. That's very true. So what is your success rate? Oh, I've, I've transitioned out over 70 into their very own, saving $5,000 um, with their credit repaired. And yeah, and they still keep in touch. That's the amazing part. They tell me, Miss yeah. Sandra, you tough. You're tough, but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, transitioning out with your credit um, improved, being able to buy a house or being able to move into your own home, starting a career. I mean, I'm sure that your services include resume building and interview skills yes. and finding a yes. job. So, yes. yeah. They're, they're not only transitioning from, you know, whatever their prior situation is, but they're also transitioning and doing, making some lifestyle changes, it sounds like. Making, that's right. But that's what's important, mm -hmm. the lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. right. Because you don't, what I, what I don't want for them is to be at Gracious Hands and doing well and not mm -hmm. equipping them with what they're going to need when they leave Gracious Hands. So I always right. tell them, you came in with your toolbox empty, okay? Now, when you leave, it's full. Yes. So you have the hammer to knock down the barriers. You have everything that you need now. So mm -hmm. I don't want to look back up and see you standing in my face because we've already given you everything that you need. <laughs> right, right, right. So because I'm coming from a domestic violence, um, trafficking and so forth background, with your women, are do you... What are their dynamics overall? Is it just the fact that they're single moms with kids? Do you get a lot of domestic violence victims? What is your population? What do you mostly serve? Domestic substance, just being, mm -hmm. I missed the paycheck. Uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't want to be in a box. So right. if they are a woman, if, they, if you are a woman with a child and you need our help, we're going to try to meet your needs regardless of where you been, what dynamics, yes, where, you know, what you have going on. And that's awesome because I find, and I'm sure a lot of um, advocates will agree that when we have victims that come to us, um, women that have kids, especially, it's really hard for us to find shelters for them because all of the domestic violence shelters here in Charlotte, which you have safe lines and then you have some other um, shelters, they're all full unfortunately and so then we have to and likewise well, mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and, likewise. and I'm saying yeah you're full everyone is full everyone so is full. yes they are so these transitional housing um programs and organizations and services like yours are very much needed very much needed um how many homes do you have and what is your plans for the future when it comes to your organization well, I only currently have the one home, um, and we were blessed with this home by an angel. We actually went through some things with the property that we were renting, whereas that they decided mm -hmm. that they didn't want to rent to us any longer. And an angel okay. heard our story and came along and bought us one. But my vision is to have 10, and not okay. just in Charlotte, but in surrounding areas, and not just for women and children, because we have right. just as many men that are out yeah. there raising their children that are single as well. So that's, I, yes. I want a house for them yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I want a house for them and, also. And then we need that. Yes. yes. The men need that. Um, I was saying earlier when I started the, um, the podcast tonight is that I would like to interview some some more men because us as women, we're, we're natural nurturers. We're out here. We're doing what we're doing in the right. community. But uh, there's a lot of times that the men and the boys in our community are going unrecognized. Um, so that right. I, I love that, that you want to do for the men as well, because there's a lot of amazing fathers out here who are taking care of their yeah. kids. I know a lot myself. Yeah. And yeah. it's hard being a, a, a single parent. Yes. But my Definitely. husband raised his children, you know, so um, yeah, it, they're out here. We just don't hear yeah. about it as much as we do to women. But that's with yeah. anything, you know. They that's downplayed true. the men a little bit. 
That's true, especially our black men. And I don't mean to put put this in a in a box, but a lot of times our 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 kings and our black men, our minority men are, are really not being recognized for the good that they do in the community. Um, and right. I, I think that's really important. All men, you know, are doing great things in the community, but especially when we have our black men who are doing such amazing things in the community for for others, it's right. it's great to recognize them. But also when they fall for us as, as women, as queens to come and, you know, come along and help when, where we can and support where we can. Right, right, right. Yeah. Not to be enablers, but to help. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so yes. I know not everybody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to open up a home to women that I have no idea who they are. So can you give us a little background about you? Where, where who is Sonja? What what do we need to know about you? <laughs> Hi, Cedric. Hey, friend. Hey, friend. <laughs> Good to see you. He will come on and just cut up, right? Uh, well, um, you know, I'm I'm just uh, I, I'm a Charlotte native. Been here all my life. Um, I have three beautiful children. I have eight grandchildren. I have a wonderful oh, wow. husband. I uh-huh. love the Lord, um, and I'm I'm just here to do whatever um, God has asked me to do, and that's for mm-hmm. me to reach back and help those that cannot help themselves and not expect anything afterwards. You know, it's mm-hmm. simple. I live a fairly mm-hmm. simple life, nothing big and extravagant. Um, I think the highlight of my life is when I see these broken women come in, so mm-hmm. broken, but when I when they leave, they are so full of life. And, right. and that's the best part of what I do. Nothing right. more, nothing less. Right, right. What is the age range of women that usually are in your homes? Um, 18 to 80. 18 to 80. So you have a really wide range of women that are coming that are coming through your doors. That's amazing. Yes. That is amazing. Yes. Amazing. It's definitely amazing. I saw on your website that you started this organization when you were a teenager. No, no, no. Not when I was a teenager. No. That no. I didn't start no. it until 20, 2012. Yeah. I didn't start okay. it until I was twenty twelve. Okay. No. All right. So maybe maybe I read something. Okay. All right. So <laughs> we're gonna go past that. I was a teenage, teenage mom. No, you were a, okay. where it's that's, I was a teenage yeah. mom. Okay. Yes. That's yes. what it was. I was, a, I was a teenage mom and that's why I can relate so mm-hmm. so well to right. those that were teenage moms, those mm-hmm. that were single moms those that was moms with multiple children. Um, mm-hmm. So just a vast of range, you know, um, I can relate. And um, right. that's why it, it's, this is my passion and it's so dear to me because, you know, right. oftentimes teenage parents, you know, society say what we cannot do versus mm-hmm. telling us what we can do. And mm-hmm. it, I'm proof that it can be done. And you know, I'm very transparent to the women. I say, hey, don't look at Miss Sandra and think that she's always been here because I haven't. But everything right. that I went through was for you. Right. I was supposed mm-hmm. to come back and tell you my story and what he did for me and how I made it. And as long right. as I do that, I'm, uh, I'm almost for certain you're going to make it too. There's no doubt mm-hmm. in my mind. Because if he right. did it for me, he'll definitely do it for you. That's true. And you're, you're definitely a success story. I've met a lot of um, single moms. I've met a lot of young single moms. Um, and I tell them, don't give up. Just because you're young does not mean that you can't go to college or that you can't um, finish getting your high school diploma, um, you know, and provide for, provide for your child. Be- being a young mom is not a death sentence. If, yeah. if anything, your children should be an encouragement, should be your motivation. That's right. And yeah, so your children are are your motivators. I know me; I was one of the last out of my um, my friends to have kids, but mm-hmm. that doesn't change the fact that being a mom is it's a full time job by itself. By but itself, it is. It's a full time job. Um, <laughs> I, I remember with the research, they were saying that if a, a homemaker, a mother that stays home, got paid for her. Uh, skills and being a mother that she would uh, 
have this enormous salary for all the things that mothers do. We're nurses, you know, we're, right. we're counselors. <laughs> right. We're, right. We're all kinds of things. We learn so many skills as, as a mother that sometimes people think that just because you're, you know, you're a mom and you stay at home that you're not doing any work or that yeah. your, your, your work is not of monetary value, but right. research has shown that it, it has great monetary value because so many skills that you learn as, as a mother. Um, yes. So being a single mom, it's not a death wish. If anything, it's, it's a, a reason to be motivated. It's a reason to go out there and get a job or to work or go back to school. It's a, a reason for you to do so many powerful things for you and, and your children to leave leave right. behind the legacy like you were saying leaving a right. house not a section eight voucher <laughs> not a section, right you can't leave that anyway so why would that you know right. I don't that's something I, I never let them be their goals I had this young lady um <laughs> she came in and she gave me every reason as to why she couldn't go to work and I was like okay um but okay. this is part this is what you signed up for so eventually she started right. working and she she came to me. She said, oh, Miss Sandra, they're going to cut off my food stamps. I said, oh, really? I said, uh -huh. well, you know, that's normally what happens in the real world. You know, we, yeah. we really do pay for our own food. I said, yeah. so what would you rather have? Would you rather have that, that check or would uh -huh. you rather have those food stamps that you get once a month? Mm -hmm. She said, yeah. oh, I never thought about it like that. Oh, <laughs> oh. now you get it. Yeah. The light went off in her head. I said, well, you can't get government assistance and make the money that you're making you can't right. have it both ways so which way do you want it and i must say right. to this day she's doing great um and she, she got it she got it right. my my goal is to try to I, I try to teach them that there's nothing wrong with getting those things if right. you need it however mm -hmm. that's a stepping stone it was not a set up for a lifestyle and too many people have become codependent on that and allowing it to be a lifestyle while they're yeah. in gracious hands, I try to make sure that that goes away. Am I successful mm -hmm. with all but those that I am successful with? That is, that is gratitude to me. I'm okay with that. But I push yeah. really, really hard to get them to see the bigger picture. And that life can offer them so much more if they just put in the energy and the effort into themselves. Right. Right. I, I'm glad that you brought that out because, you know, I was there. I a single mom, you know, my income wasn't wasn't the best to support two kids. I got food stamps for my kids. It's a help, but that's exactly what it is. It's to help. Right. It's not it's something help. that you should rely on for the rest of your right. life or right. use as a crutch for not right. doing what you need to do to advance. Yes. Right. 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 So mm -hmm. I, I I push them and sometimes, you know, everybody is not ready for the push. Um, yes. I tell them, you know, gracious hands is not a handout. If you're looking for a handout, I just tell them, please keep going because it's not going to happen there. It's just right. not. It's a hand up and it's to to help guide you and get you where you need to go. Um, right. God, God did not ask me to be a doormat and he did not say, okay, everybody that come and say help, help. He, he tells us everybody don't want it and we have to right. recognize those things. And um, I'm willing to go all in for those that are willing to go all in for themselves. But if I'm more invested in them than they are in themselves, then, uh, that's a problem. Mm. Yes, and I can't, it is. A I can't, I can't do that. I, I, I will not do that. But if mm. I see them trying and they're really eager to get their lives and turn their lives around for them and their children, they mm. got. I'm their number one cheerleader. That's what I tell them. I'm your number one fan, and I know right. that you can do it. And I'm right here with you this, all the way. Yes. And I can feel that. I can feel that. Um, you know, I met you uh, for our, my anniversary party for the Butterfly Visions Project and you came out. I could feel your spirit. I can feel that you, you know, you're a helping person, you're a caring person. But I, I can also tell that you're a very strong person and that you um, are a motivator. Um, and being in the situation, well, not the situation, being in the position that you are to help other people, you have to have that that strong backbone because people will take advantage yes, they if will. you allow them to, or if they yes. have, yeah, if they're able to, if they're able to. Can you share with us without names, one of your, your best success stories when it comes to Gracious Hands? Oh my God, it's too many. <laughs> um, 
or maybe your most whatever you want to share (laughs) well right now i'm very very excited about a young lady that is currently still in the home um she's Mm. 90 points away from a 700 credit score um yeah Um, (laughs) i am so excited um she just um purchased her uh, a car um a nice car I kept saying, you know, okay. every year she was going to get these pieces of cars. And I said, not this mm-hmm. year, sister. That's not what yeah. we're going to do. I said, if I don't approve <laughs> it, you can't get it. <laughs> you right, know? Right. Um, but she, right. got a, she got a good car, um, good job, and mm-hmm. getting ready to, well, she's looking for a better job. She has a job, but she's looking for a mm-hmm. better job. And hopefully in July, she should be purchasing her house. And oh, I that am, is amazing. Yes, I am so proud of her that I don't know what to do. And then that I have, amazing. yeah, I have another young lady. There's so many. I have another young lady um, that has started her own business, her own traveling business, and doing okay. very, very, doing very, very well. Um, she's no longer in Charlotte right now, um, but she moved out of the city and just took off like a butterfly. Um, oh, good for her. It is so many, um, so many women, like I said, it's over 70 of them that has Mm -hmm. transitioned out. Um, I have plenty that has gotten, like I said, their CNA certificates and Mm -hmm. dental hygienists and phlebotomy and just doing great things in life. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. Very amazing. It's good. And I'm sure that's a awesome feeling for you to be able to I know you were saying that this your phone never stops ringing and that you know you would be winding down around this time but it has to be an amazing feeling to be able to go to bed at night and say she made it she's got her own house she's got her job her kids are smiling her kids are happy that has to be an amazing feeling for you it is um but what's more amazing, as I said, to see them feel that way about themselves. Yes. You know, that's, mm-hmm. money can't buy that. To see yes. them feel that way. I mean, I'm happy, but to get them to that place. Because when, when you start believing in yourself mm-hmm. and you know that you did it, that's an awesome feeling all together by itself. And most of the it women is. that have come there you know, have never felt that way. I had one to tell me today and um, she hasn't been there long, but she said, Miss Sandra, she said, when I came through the door, I know, I knew this is where I supposed, I was supposed to be. She said, Mm -hmm. just in the length of time that I've been here, she said, everything has started to turn around. I say, honey, you Mm -hmm. ain't seen nothing yet. God, (laughs) he just started. Uh (laughs) That's just 30 days. I said, give him some more time. (laughs) You haven't seen a thing. Just right. keep on trusting right. and believing and watching. Watch him work. Because he's right. going to do it. Right. <laughs> that do is it. awesome. That is awesome. So how long can these women stay at Gracious Hands? Okay. To that point. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. I say it's a year. Okay. Mm-hmm. However, if they're not ready in a year, they don't go in a year. I'm not going to say, oh, well, your 12 months is up. You got to go. Mm-hmm. No, right. ma'am. Not on my watch. Yeah. If I see them, they are trying. Because some of those, some women come in, they have felonies. Some mm-hmm. come in, their credit is really, really jacked up. So, you know, it takes a little bit longer. Um, right. So until they are equipped with everything that they need, and in most cases, it's only 10 months. I think I've had one out of 150 mm-hmm. that has had to stay 14 months. Because we, okay. really we really go really, really hard to, to get them. Okay. But I would okay. never never um i would never tell them okay your 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 12 months is up and you have to go now mm-hmm. if they violate the rules then they have to go but mm-hmm. they have to go but if they're okay. doing what they're supposed to do yeah i 12 months a year is the cap but like mm-hmm. i said you know it if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and there's their the motivation's there you'll continue to help them yeah if the motivation is there i continue to help that's amazing. That's amazing. We have someone, Miss Katrina Thomas. Um, she is an advocate in um, in Georgia. Amazing woman. Um, she works with domestic violence victims and women and children. She asked um, where you are located, um, your state, and I will let you tell because I know what the answer is. But I want you to tell where are you located, and you said that you want to expand. Where do you want to expand to? 
Um, I'm located currently in Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, hopefully, I, I'm really wanting to franchise Gracious Hands. That's just my vision. Um, so wherever okay. God leads me, if I can open up a Gracious Hands in Atlanta, if God say go, we going. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. wherever God leads us, Katrina, I'm willing to go. Right. Well, I'm definitely going to connect you because um, she has a lot of resource, resources and connections here in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, even though she is based. She's, I believe, about an hour out from Atlanta, um, but she has some really good connections here. She comes to Charlotte often. Um, so she's a wonderful resource, a beautiful friend. Um, she's all about helping women and children and empowering women. Uh, so I will make sure that I connect the two of you. You, um, after our, your interview today. Um, do you do this full time or do you also work a nine to five? I do it full time. Full time. Wow. <laughs> nice. <Full laughs> that is, that's amazing. <laughs> that's that God, is so that's amazing. God's amazing. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. It is. yes. But yeah, I do it full time. Um, that is amazing. That is amazing. Do you have partners that provide the training and um, like the credit repair and so forth? Do you have partners yes, that are I provide have, helping provide these services? My, my whole staff is licensed MSWs, um, and they are all um, all twelve of them. Um, okay, that's why I know it's all God. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. they yeah. Okay, so you do have partners. Okay, yes. um, so. Tell me this, if there is someone that is interested in doing the same thing, um, because that actually, when I was in foster care, I saw things in foster care that stuck with me that I was like, I do not want this to happen to another young girl. So my dream has always been to open up a home for girls, like runaways and so forth. So someone that wants to to do this what what are your suggestions how would you get started with providing these kind of services for for women because it sounds like you said that you can go to you know dss and these other services can refer so how do you get started with trying to provide safe safe homes for people that need it people ask me this question all the time and i really have a hard time asking it um, mm -hmm. because I, I was just passion driven. Um, I mm -hmm. prayed <laughs> and I asked God what to do. He mm -hmm. gave me the name in my sleep, mm -hmm. named it, got 501c3, mm -hmm. found a rental and opened up the house. Um, it's all I can tell mm -hmm. you. Um, I started going to department of, so just letting people know that I'm in the community and this is what I'm willing to do, um, to help, mm -hmm. you know, that the house that we are open and we're ready to serve. Once I went out and, you know, told people this is what I wanted to do, then the doors just started to open from there. Right. Right. And, and, and that's it. I, <laughs> that's it. Just letting people know that you're in the, in the community because right. people are looking for us. They're looking for you. They're, they're looking for all of us and they all are. of those that are saying are. that, yeah, that they want to help. Um, right now, it's just a matter of Walking it out and making it plain. God say, write it down and make it plain. I say, walk it yeah. out and make it plain, you know, um, and let people right. know that you're in the community and all if all the other things are coming, are fall, fall together. Right. What are some of the, what are your needs right now? What do you need to help further your mission? So for everybody that's watching right now, what are some of the things that you need to help the women in the homes and the children in the homes? Well, we can always use monetary donations, of course. We're not federally or state funded, mm -hmm. so we don't receive grant money. As of yet, it's coming. We're praying. Okay. Um, so if anybody yes. want to make monetary donations, they can do that by going to GraciousHandsHousing.org. Um, also on the website, there is a list of um, toiletries that we are always in need of. You've got to think about it. It's a house full of women. So yes. So we're all... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're always in need of um, toiletries. Um, okay. And other than that, just constant prayer um, is, is my true belief. Um, just constant prayer. Okay. And what about your volunteer needs? 
what what kind of volunteers tearing do you need for gracious hands well being that most of the women work um mm -hmm. they the women are gone from the home from anywhere from six in the morning to six in the evening so okay. monday through friday is normally it's nothing if i had brought a volunteer in the only thing they could do with clean was was to clean and i wouldn't bring people in just to clean <laughs> because they have to do that so normally right. when I have events is when I need volunteers. And normally I put that on my mm -hmm. website when I am in need of those things. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I talked to you earlier about doing a donation drive to help out the your gracious hands and the women there in the home. So I'm going to get that together and awesome. talk to you more about that. Um, I believe we said April 20th. We were yeah. going to try to do it. Yeah. Okay. So for everyone that is listening, we are going to um, do a donation drive for Gracious Hands. Um, toiletries is the big thing. So we're going to work on, um, can we do like, well, I haven't looked at your website yet, but I will get the list, but okay. definitely toiletries. Um, we will. Mm -hmm. Laundry yep. detergent, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about like, do you need things for the kids, like diapers and stuff like that? Do, do well, you partners need with, those things? I'm partners with Sack and Harvest Food Bank, so I get Pampers okay. and wipes on in bulk, and I can get okay. those as, as much as I can, you know, as I need to. Okay. So um, normally, okay. if I don't have a newbie coming in, they're pretty much mm -hmm. good with Pampers and wipes. Okay. Overflow. Okay. Good. Okay, so what we, what I will do is I will go on your website. I will get the list of what you need. Um, we will put it out there and try to get as much as we can to help you out. Um, I completely believe in what you're doing, um, your mission. Um, you're an amazing person from the moment I met you for our anniversary last year. Likewise. Um, you are too, I, love. Oh, thank you. I saw an amazing, strong woman. And then when I found out what you do, it, it all made sense. Um, wow. There, well, thank you. there are so many, there are so many women out here and not just women, because men too, that need help. And sometimes it just takes someone to have the love and the passion that you say that you have to, to help people because right. there's so much hate and so much abuse and so much that is going on in the world just right outside our door right outside. and so many people that need help and okay. so when we have services like yours and organizations like yours we need to know about them because okay. it's a high demand and I'm so excited for you that you want to open up more houses because it is so needed so yeah. needed so I hope that you continue to have that passion and continue oh, yeah. to have that. Um, who is your support system? Tell us about your support system. <sighs> my husband <laughs> is my support system. Um, I have great friends that support mm -hmm. me. I have an excellent board that supports me. And I have That's excellent important. volunteers that surround me. Um, they mm -hmm. believe it. Not only do they believe in me, but they they have they see my vision and they go just mm -hmm. as hard for my vision and for gracious hands as I do. And that's what's yeah. important to have those 12 people to stand behind you mm -hmm. like that, you know, um, and never mm -hmm. have to second guess, second guess, you know, what are their reasons for being here? I know their reasons mm -hmm. for being there. And that's to make sure that those women and children succeed as well as gracious hands. Right. Right. And and it's showing you're 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 doing and you're you're moving forward you're helping women you have 70 women women that you have helped that is outstanding um that you have touched that many lives you have helped transition 150, 150. 150 women Over, yeah. yeah 70 Over have transition yeah yes okay <laughs> <laughs> yes you know what Look, I'm going to apologize to you right now because when it comes to remembering things, my memory has gone. It's horrible here lately. So it's okay. 
I pick up the details, but it might not fit where it's supposed to. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Honey. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yes. So 150 women in seven, 7D have successfully transitioned. Yes. Good. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. Um, so yes, it is very important to have an outstanding board. Um, I have not moved yet to make uh, Butterfly Visions Project a nonprofit because that's been my concern. I want to make sure that the people that are on my board, um, I have amazing volunteers right now and amazing partnerships with different organizations and other advocates. But when it comes to my board, that was what concerned what concerned me the most about taking that step is because not everybody is going to have your passion and your drive, but when you find people that do, then you're blessed, definitely. Well, I've only, uh, Gracious Hands is young, okay? So I've mm -hmm. only been in, in the community for four years. And it mm -hmm. took me at least two years to find a, a decent board. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, and um, I, I believe that. I believe and, that. You know, it comes with the territory. So as mm -hmm. you grow, you learn mm -hmm. and, you know, and then you have to make the, the, the adjustments that are needed. Um, right. However, you, you can't let that, deter you from what you're supposed to do because people are going to be people um, that's true and it's nothing that we can do about that so it's a gamble that we take I might as, you might as well take that gamble doing what, you, what you're passionate about <laughs> you know that is very true that is very true um, I would never let a person or people stop me from doing what I do um, you know it, it wouldn't, yep. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been in it for the right reasons if I did that you know, because you You're can do 99 right. things right, and that one thing you do wrong, those are the things that people are going to talk about. So, you know, um, I think it was so Oprah Winfrey that said, um, if, you're, if you can't get past the people, you're not ready for success. I'm past. I've been mm -hmm. past people. Uh, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that goes with the territory. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just thankful that, you know, God told me, he said, well, this is the season that I was sent. And he mm -hmm. has sent the ones that needed to be affiliated with gracious hands and I, like i said i'm thankful for that but i do appreciate the ones that were there that um mm -hmm. i'm not gonna say they didn't have the passion but I'm, I'm i truly believe that if this is your passion you make time for what it yes. is that you're supposed to do so that's a, that's a lot that of the things that we, where we you know ran into problems with that but otherwise they still were great people right right and that's so true that's so true um our goal uh, talking to my husband is that we are going to um, do that in 2019. And so thank you for that, for that feedback, because my mom has told me um, that when it comes to your spirituality, that you have a relationship with God, not the, not the people that go into the church or the people that go into, into, into the place that you worship. It's not about them. It's right. about God. And right. so what you just said just made me think of my mom's advice. Um, it's not about the people. It's about the passion okay. and what That's you're doing right. for the community. Right. It's great. Right. That's great. Um, I had someone else. They said, uh, Miss Judith, she said, you ladies are such an inspiration. I am beyond proud and honored to call um, call you her friend. That's Miss Judith Riggs. Hi, so, Miss Judy. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, friend. <laughs> Thank you so that much. That is so awesome. Um, I am looking at, it says, Miss to Sharon, she said, I'm in Montgomery, Alabama, and would like to start a home for domestic violence. What information could you share? And I think we just answered that where you were saying that, you know, it took a lot of passion, it took a lot of drive and having the right support system in place. Um, she said that she is a 501, but started Women of Refined Gold from a passion not experienced. So um, it looks like you are motivating some people right here to continue with their passion, to go out, do what it is that they want to do, um, continue helping the community um, and being a light, uh, being and a light me, in the community. Let me share this. What do you um, like to I, do in your spare time? Honestly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be with my grandchildren. Be with my family. Um, I enjoy my family. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I would rather be with them than mm -hmm. anyone else. Um, I'm, I don't really like to go that much. <laughs> um, get a good look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> peace, peace of mind is the greatest thing that you can possess. And I possess. 
address that well right here in privacy of my home. <laughs> so I don't really have a lot of activities that I do. But, I know um, that's right. <laughs> so um, yeah. that's what I like to do, you know, just time with my family when I do it all the time because it should take, take a lot of time. Um, so when I have downtime, I like right. to be with my, my babies. That's good. That's amazing. And you're there um, supporting and and building families, right, with Gracious Hand. So that makes perfect sense that you enjoy being with your family most, definitely. And I interrupted you. You were about to say something before I asked you I was, that question. Um, I, get, I get like maybe from New York to right here, Charleston, anywhere. Um, and people are wanting to know the very same thing. How do they get started? And one of the things that I ask okay. them, are you doing it for money? Because if you're a 501c3, if you're not, we all know that it's hard work. You're not just money is not kicking down your doors. Please, please, please let it be something that you're passionate about. And if you're passionate about it, the provision will come. It's going to come. Right. Just do what you're passionate about. Don't just do it because it's the, the latest thing to do. Because a lot of people out here say, I'm going to open up this. Yeah, because it's the latest thing to do. Don't do it for those reasons. Right. Right. And I, I think that's that's another great point, that if you are doing this for the money, a lot of the helping professionals that I know, they're not doing it for the money. They're doing it because they like helping their community. They enjoy, um, uh, you know, just advancing people's lives, being a part of people's lives. So you're right. Having a 501c3, it's not about making a profit and and you know buying the big house and sustaining so forth and so on it's about the passion of helping people and advancing advancing people mm -hmm. advancing people and that's and to me definitely you know, that's, definitely that's, where the, that's where the that's the best thing to see them advance you can't put money you can't put a price on that right 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 and you're right. Um, I have a young lady that I go to Safe Alliance once a month and I talk to a lot of women there and I have the opportunity to follow up with them when they leave there. And there's one young lady, her name is Miss Natasha, and I'm sure that she won't mind me saying her name. Um, and now she has started her own program, not even six months out of the shelter, but she, she had the drive. She had the passion, she had the commitment, and now she's doing amazing things right now in West Virginia. Um, and it's so, it's so rewarding. And it, it's, it's, a, it's amazing to see how, how she has blossomed and she has taken the trauma that she has gone through and yeah. turned it into something. She's turned it into an organization. And yes. I'm so happy that now I can support her when she, you know, yeah, That's yeah, I yes. love it. so um, I have someone else. They said, do you do? Yeah, it is. It's, it's amazing to be able to see your passion and, and, and where it is, what it's doing, being able to see the, the fruits of what you're doing. It's, it's amazing. It's very, yeah. it's amazing. I have someone who said, do you do fundraisers? to get what you need. So do you have any events or anything coming up that we need to know about? Well, we're putting together now, um, last year we did a all white, I see Miss Allen down here and she attended that. Um, we do an all white fun and it's a dance and we did it at the Johnson Mansion last year. Um, we don't have all the details, but when I get the details for that, um, I'll let you know so that you can share. Um, but that's one of our largest fundraisers. Last year, we pulled in over $20,000 in that fundraiser. Um, so it was an okay. awesome fundraiser for us. Um, so that's one of the things that we have coming up in August. Okay. And it sounds nice. I saw the pictures on your website. Y'all were looking very sharp <laughs> and <laughs> gorgeous. You. So I'm Thank glad. You. That's that's amazing. That you, yeah, I saw you. You were looking good, girl. <laughs> Thank you, <Mom. laughs> 
hopefully y'all can be there this time. This time. <laughs> Yes, I would love that. And you said it's in August, but when you get the details, please share it with me um, I because I will definitely be following you and sharing it um, okay. with um, our supporters and hopefully your new supporters as well. Yes. Um, so how can we find you on Facebook? How can we connect with you so that everybody knows? Okay, on Facebook, it's Gracious Hands Transitional House Housing for Women and Children. Um, on my website, it's Gracious Hands housing.org and my phone number is 704-962-6147. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say again that it was always, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. You're always um, inspirational. You're always motivating. Um, I admire you for what you're doing in the community right now um, and that you will continue to do. And I hope that we, um, the Speak Up and Inspire series and also the Butterfly Visions Project will be able to uh, support you and be there for the women that you are um, supporting, but also for us to be able to connect and do some things in the community together. Um, so I hope that that's something that you will be open to. Oh, yes. We're open for that. We're gonna do Great. We're gonna Thank you that. so much. Thank you. Thank you. And, all right. Have a blessed night. Yes. Okay. And I look forward to seeing you soon. And we will see you on April 20th. I will let everybody know what the details are for okay. donating to Gracious Hands. And you have a good night. And thank you so much. Thank you. Be blessed. Bye. <laughs> good night. Well, thank you everyone for joining us um, on the Speak Up and Inspire series with Ms. Sonia. We are listening live right now on Facebook. As usual, I will upload to YouTube week, but please take a moment to go to GraciousHandsHousing.org to learn more about Gracious Hands. I think we covered a lot tonight so that you have an overall of what type of services that Gracious Hands offers, but also you can go on there to see volunteer opportunities um, for you to learn more about the organization, what services are provided, read some success stories, and also look at the photos, see the happy faces of the different women and their children that Gracious Hands has helped since they have um, come into existence. Over 150 women have been held through Gracious Hands Housing. 70 women have graduated and have transitioned and are living successful lives. Um, I don't know what else more to say, but that this is an organization, transitional housing that is providing a safe home along with services such as credit repair, um, resume building, interviewing skills, finding finding jobs, job placement, connecting women to resources for them to um, rebuild their lives and be successful, provide for their children, provide permanent housing for their children. This is a service that a lot of women in the community need. I know that there was a point in my life that this kind of service right here would have been such a blessing for me and my kids. So I want to make sure that all of you who are watching tonight or will watch in the future when we do the replay, please, please share this information with your churches, with any organizations that you're connected to, share it on your Facebook pages, your Instagram pages, share it with your family and your friends. Um, transitional housing is needed. We have a lot of homeless shelters, um, but it's nothing like being able to go into a home that is run by someone who truly and sincerely sincerely cares about you, who knows where you're coming from because she's been there herself and wants to make sure that when you leave, that you are going to be successful. Sometimes when people are going through what they're going through, they go to a shelter or they go to a program, they're there for six months, they're there for nine months, they're there for a year, but the staff or the service is not personally invested because they've never been in your shoes before. Gracious Hands has had the experience. 
They have the resources. They have the volunteers. They have an amazing board. They have an amazing founder. And they have someone who truly wants you to be successful. And she said that even though her cap is a year, she is not going to put you out on the streets knowing that you are not ready to go. And sometimes we need that extra support. But in order to go into this program, you have to be motivated. You have to be dedicated. And you have to take advantage of the services that Gracious Hands offers you. So please, look her up gracioushandshousing.org. We are going to be doing a donation drive to help her organization and also the women and children that are in her home currently. She has a mission and a purpose and a vision, and we want to support that here at the Speak Up and Inspire series. Thank you for watching and have a great night.